viola sigh again. Bear cold wood shortened, the music speeds up, the march-like scale, hysterical first island swoops, tremolo everywhere. In the poem, stanzas one, three, and five are nature descriptions, with stanza two and four each spoken by one of the poem's two protagonists. In stanza two, the woman confesses her story to the man in a dramatic outburst. Schoenberg's description, quote, she had married a man whom she did not love. She was unhappy and lonely in this marriage, but forced herself to remain faithful. And finally, obeying the maternal instinct, she is now with child from the man she does not love. She even had considered herself praiseworthy for fulfilling her duty towards the demands of nature. In desperation, she now walks beside the man with whom she has fallen in love, fearing his sentence will destroy her. The opening of the stanza comes literally from the text, with the viola representing the woman's speech and her distraught inner state. She speaks. Repeat. Repeat and start to develop. Higher. Start a ripple. To second violin. To first. She confesses her tragedy in a dramatic outburst. Second violin and cello do what the first violin did. Start a third time. Angst. Do it lower. Push towards a climax. And then a cadence out of a classical period harmony text as she tries to pull herself together. Now, believe it or not, it was the next chord that utterly horrified the musical authorities of the day. To think that of all the complexities in Verclair de Nacht, this chord was the one they chose to focus on is almost incomprehensible. Here's the cadence, and we will pause on the horrifying chord. Cadence, the horrifying chord. Angst. Now try to find a place to resolve that chord. We're almost there. But instead of resolving to here, Schoenberg refuses to resolve and instead detours like this. Detour. Tremolo. Repeat. Tremolo and cello. Try to resolve a third time. No tremolo. Pause, but still completely unresolved. So much of this piece's emotional expression and intensity is created by continually developing and transforming what are often quite simple musical ideas. The core musical idea for what comes next, I no longer believed in happiness, is really a simple one measure fragment in the cello. The first time you hear it with delicate harmony, mutes, and tremolos, it's mournful and poignant. Shallow. An exquisite sigh. Do it again and notice the leap down. The third time varies and leaps up. A long thought. Each new version shows a different emotional side to this simple idea. This time it's louder, more tortured, hyper-expressionistic. Melody, imitated cello, repeat, third time leap up, complex texture, tremolos, then it recedes, poignant cello and viola. But listen to this amazing climactic version, as I no longer believe in happiness, gets reduced to its first four notes, and then just its first two. I know, I know, I know, I know. Like this. Four. I know, I know, I know, I know. And yet I had a great yearning. That's what makes Schoenberg great. For a purposeful life. For the happiness and responsibility of motherhood.
Stanza three of the poem takes us back to description. Quote, she walks with awkward step. But the lover's exchange has literally changed the world around them. And in a brilliant stroke, Schoenberg brings back the opening Bare Cold Woods and two people walking music, but completely altered by the tension between the two lovers. Here's how that music sounded originally at the opening. Now listen to the intensity of it as it becomes She Walks With Awkward Step. Each awkward step filled with tension. Step as it repeats. Step. Start a third time. And vary. Similarly, her sad music from the opening originally sounded like this. and lower. Now it returns, but the agitation of she walks with awkward step intrudes. Her sadness over it all, interrupted by she walks with awkward step. As always, it repeats. And again, she walks with awkward step interrupts. Then the opening stanza's more light-filled version of Bare Cold Woods starts to come back. Byron two. Pass to the old road. A third time. And then, quote, she looks up, the moon accompanies them. Her dark glance is inundated with light. Listen to this magical setting of that image. Repeat. The man will finally speak to open stanza four, and it's the key moment of the piece for Schoenberg. Quote, the voice of a man speaks, a man whose generosity is as sublime as his love. He'll forgive her and accept the child as his own, but the moment has to be set up psychologically. The moon will descend, this music will send from the moon's register to the man's register. The moon's register. The man's register. Then just cello. And then in an amazing passage, he'll speak his forgiveness in the most tonal, almost Bach-like music of the piece, as if in church, in the cello. But first, he somehow discovers the most remote key imaginable, the key of forgiveness. The key. I forgive you in the cello. and a cadence right out of church. Now watch the unique way Schoenberg transfigures his earlier material. The turbulent music of the woman's first speech originally sounded like this. Now, this music is transfigured by the man's forgiveness and becomes this exquisite version in dialogue between cello and violin. Him, her, 